Okay, Yarn Crazies, let's be really honest about something in a lot of people's minds. Crochet is great for afghans, potholders, and doilies, but not real great for beautiful, comfortable clothing. Wrong! Let's blow that particular preconception all to pieces, and if you are a knitter who does not currently crochet, please stick around and watch anyway. You just might decide it's time to expand your world. Welcome back to I Heart Yarn. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of my favorite crocheted summer wardrobe pieces. This episode is not just for the benefit of introducing my fellow crochet fiends out there to some great patterns you may not have tried yet, but also for all of you knitters who are curious about the benefits and wearability of crochet clothing items. By the way, I'm going to hold off on drawing the name of the winner for episode seven. Across most of the US, school is out, a lot of travel is happening, and I wanna give more viewers a chance to watch that episode and check out Kay Hopkins' Knit for the Soul Pattern Collection. Stay tuned for episode nine. I'll announce the winner for episode seven at that time. So why has crochet historically been relegated mostly to functional household items and the occasional simple accessory? I think it has to do mostly with three primary issues. First off, if someone was going to make clothing in the past, it was going to be sewn from fabric, not knit or crocheted. I come from a long line of talented seamstresses, and let me tell you, my great-grandmother could turn out a nice shirt for all three of her children in the time it would have taken to make one basic sweater. Crochet was that thing she did for a little while at the end of the hard day to relax, and it was generally something small like lace edging for a handkerchief or a pillowcase or a cute doily to put under the candy dish on the coffee table. Another limiting factor was probably the materials available. Knitters and crocheters of today live in an absolute wonderland of choice compared to most of our predecessors. Scratchy wool yarn and a few colors of crochet cotton thread are not real inspiring choices when it comes to designing and making clothing. And in a lot of places, that was about all you had to choose from. Really lucky folks had access to some linen and some silk too. Even when more modern materials like viscose, rayon, acrylic, polyesters, and various blends first hit the market, they were still not great choices for clothing. They either didn't feel very nice against the skin, tended not to hold up against wearing and washing, or were simply too costly. The third big reason I feel crochet was ignored for garments is its lack of general stretchiness that made it a poor fit for things most people made with the wool yarns of yesteryear being, of course, socks, sweaters, and warm woolly hats. As much as I love crochet, I'll be the first person to admit that while there are some cool crocheted sock patterns out there, you will never beat the fit or the feel of a pair of well-knit socks, and knitted ribbing on sweater cuffs and collars simply can't be beat for stretchiness and fit. Now, all that being said, let's look at the two things that I feel sometimes gives crochet a serious advantage over knitting. Yes, you heard me right, advantages. First, that lack of stretchiness in most crocheted fabrics, I feel the terms we should actually apply instead would be structure and strength. Crocheted fabrics, for the most part, tend to keep their shape and are better at resisting the effects of gravity and can allow for some really amazing tailoring. I tend to crochet around the hemlines, collars, and armholes of my knit tops, tees, and tanks for a very good reason. It makes those elements of those garments more stable and a lot stronger. If you have ever knit a seamless sweater, you probably found out the major flaw with trying to avoid seaming. There is no stabilizing structure to keep your sweater from sagging and growing on you as you wear it. I don't know about you, but that kind of thing makes me crazy. The second advantage to crocheting garments, the speed factor. I am pretty fast with my knitting, but I can still crochet a top in a lot less time than knitting. It's equivalent. Yes, crochet does tend to make more yarn, take more yarn between 7 and 30% more if you are comparing similar stitch textures. But I'm a huge fan of following up with a big marathon of a project with some instant gratification and being able to whip out a gorgeous top in a weekend sure can feel nice. Now enough chatter about the technicals, let's look at garments and patterns. My first foray into crochet clothing is the simply named 
Feather and Fan Top by Rebecca Averill, a free pattern on Ravelry. This pattern calls for a DK weight, but I ended up using a super slippery and oh so silky against the skin sport weight viscose called a maze. It is an easy pattern to customize, and I was inspired by other folks who had added stripes to theirs, so I used two contrasting colors, the magenta and the sterling silver. I have now used this pattern twice, the second one being a dark chocolate brown cotton and viscose blend called Tropicalia to go with the skirt I loved but had had a hard time pairing with store-bought blouses. I will absolutely be making more of these in the future. My next one will probably be a dress length garment and I plan on making a long sleeve version out of probably an alpaca blend for winter. I love this pattern because the feather and fan stitch pattern yields a fabric with a decent amount of flexibility, is very comfortable to wear, and it's form fitting without feeling the least bit restrictive. And the simplicity of this pattern allows you to pretty easily adapt it for different sizes of yarn and to make larger or smaller sizes for a custom fit. The next addition to my crocheted summer wardrobe was a very cool pattern with the extremely uncool name of S87075 Ladies Top available for download from the Schachmeyer website. I seamed mine a little differently than called for by the pattern, so mine functions more like an oversized shell or a poncho than a top. But regardless of what you call it, it looks great and is comfortable to wear. I also used three colors in mine because, well, quite frankly, I'm an incorrigible fiddler and rule breaker when it comes to patterns, and I wanted to replicate the slimming color blocking effect of a knitted summer weight poncho I had knit a few weeks earlier. Don't worry about trying to write down any of these right now. I'll put links to all of them in the episode notes below, and they will also be posted in the slideshow at the end, tail end of this episode. And if you want to mimic the three color version I did, I'll link to my project page on Ravelry where I posted my notes about the placement of colors. By the way, here is the summer poncho pattern I was looking to mimic for any of you knitters who are interested. It's an amazing light layer for days when you want something classy but super casual to wear. When I mention the term granny square, what pops into your mind? Afghans, right? And maybe pillows, bags, and a few very boho vests, right? I will freely admit that I was right there with you on that until I found the sweet summer sweater pattern when I was looking for inspiration after grandma's received its first shipment of marble chunky glamour. It is essentially a giant granny square worked in the round. Someone had made a beautiful purple one, but I was obviously in love with the sparkly silver mix. I was so impressed by how fast and easy this top worked out that this pattern came to mind immediately a few years later when I was contemplating shop samples to make with Summertime, a gorgeous cotton and acrylic blend from Diamond Luxury. Most Yarny's automatic reaction to the worsted weight called for by this pattern would be, no way, not for summer. But the fiber content of Summertime pairs beautifully with the open weave of this fabric and makes for a really comfortable top for summer, especially with a lightweight camisole underneath it. Now for my fellow, fellow Tunisian crochet fans, let's talk about the piece that I am wearing. This is called the Tokyo Vest by Doris Chan. And surprise, surprise, while the pattern calls for a sport weight cotton, I made this one with another silky soft viscose blend called Versailles. It is a fun project to make. It consists of two rectangular panels that you seam together, and you can adjust the seaming in the front and in the back to adjust the fit and the depth of the v-neck to suit your personal preferences. By the way, I'm heartbroken to say that this amazing yarn has recently been discontinued, but as of this filming, Grandma still has some available in a number of colors. So if you would like to make a Tokyo vest like this one in the same super soft, glittery, and machine washable yarn, use the link in the episode notes below to snag some before it's all gone. Let's move on to a couple of great crocheted accessories I can vouch for, and then we'll move on to some patterns that are on my radar for the future. The first is this fun shoulder bag called the Fast Forward Chevron Purse. I'm always on the lookout for patterns that are a great fit for those crazy busy variegated yarns we all tend to fall in love with. You know, those skeins with drool-inducing color combinations that you have a miserable time figuring out what to do with later. This bag is an awesome use of a variegated and a contrasting solid. Being made with worsted weight yarn, it works up really fast. The handle is wide enough to be comfortable 
and it's in that wonderful Goldilocks zone of not too big and not too small, making it a great size bag for either a project bag or a general use shoulder bag. This pattern is like $2.50 off of Ravelry from Crazy Cabbage. It is well written and is really easy to follow. The other accessory I wanted to show you guys is this, the V Scarf by Natasia, which is a free pattern through the designer's website. This is a fun and fast Tunisian crochet project that lets you indulge in some beads and charms. And thanks to the fineness of the yarn and the open mesh of the fabric, is a great accessory for warmer months. It's so lightweight, it's almost more like jewelry than a scarf. I have a feeling I there will be more of these in my future as well, probably as Christmas and birthday presents. Are your hands itching to crochet, crochet some clothes yet? I hope so. There are so many great crochet clothing patterns out there. Let's do a quick lightning round on the ones that I am excited about making and adding to my closet in the near future. The Adina two-way vest top. I have a pretty burgundy cotton picked out for this one. The Timberwood tank. A customer came into the shop looking for yarn for this one, and now I want one too. The Zoria bomber cardigan. What a cool layering piece, right? The Lottie top. Another cool take on a granny square. I'm on the hunt for the right yarn for this one. Any suggestions, anyone? It calls for a lace weight. The hairpin lace skirt. It just looks so swishy, swingy, and fun, and hairpin lace works up pretty fast. Shockingly, I have yet to crochet any jewelry, and I think it's time I did. I want to make some circle dangle earrings. I think I'll add beads to mine. I also want to try this triangle earring pattern. Large but lightweight is always a win for me. I'm also a sucker for great bracelets, but I have really bony wrists, so Honestly, it's silly. I haven't crocheted myself one of these Katarina's cuffs just yet. I hope today's episode has inspired you to branch out a little. Whether you are a crocheter who has never made a garment or if you are a knitter who has been wondering if crochet is really worth learning, if you have tried to learn crochet and it didn't go well, be sure to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned. I'm working on putting together a series that will break down the learning process in easy little pieces. If you are already a crocheter and you would like two skeins of amaze to make one of these cool V scarfs for yourself or someone else, do me a big favor and leave me a comment here about any of the patterns that got you excited or send me an Instagram message with the word amaze and I'll draw the name of someone to win two skeins of this yarn from the supply. I still have of it because this is sadly a discontinued yarn as well. Thanks for watching I Heart Yarn, and check out episode 7 if you haven't already. I review a really great yarn for summer weight garments, and knitting patterns from one of my favorite designers, Kay Hopkins. And no matter what you are doing this time of year, be it work as usual or road tripping across the country, be sure to take time to make something that makes you happy. <music>